What's going on guys, Brennan Swank. Xcloser.com is the training company and RepConnect.io is the sales staffing company. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going into how to create role leverage within your sales team so you actually can attract A players because a lot of people want the top sales reps on their sales team. Of course you do because you're gonna make a lot more money if you have good talent, but a lot of businesses aren't even ready or have enough incentive for these sales reps to actually wanna join their sales team. So I'm gonna break down how do you can create role leverage within your organization so you can actually attract A players on your sales team. So I'm gonna break this down into a few categories. You have number one, you can attract them with capital, okay? Because sales reps wanna make money, okay? You can attract them with a good offer, okay? You could attract them with good management. Okay. You could also attract them with a good culture. Okay. You could also attract them with good OTE. So basically, obviously people want to make money. Okay, that's sales reps want to make money. You can attract them with capital. Okay, if you have money or a good OT, these, these kind of go together. If you have a good OT, a good on-track earnings, a good monthly income that the sales rep could make if they hit your KPIs on your sales team. If you have good earnings, then you can attract A players. But a lot of A players don't just look for good earnings, and that's why I'm showing you these other levers that you can put into your uh, your sales role. So. If you have a good culture, a lot of sales reps look for this because it gets to a point, and me personally, um, when I was a sales rep, I don't just want to make a lot of money. I want to work with people that I like, okay? I want to have an impact on who I'm selling to, so I want to have a good offer because if there's not a good culture and you don't like who you work with, that's honestly the most important thing because it'll get to a point to where they'll make enough capital, they'll stop caring about capital as much as they used to. And what they'll look for is who they work with. Do they enjoy going to work every single day? Do they enjoy being on your sales team? Do they enjoy it? Okay, because if they don't, then the money's only gonna go so far. Okay, especially if they're good with their money and they save it, they won't need your money anymore because they'll get to a point to where they that, that's not a good incentive for them anymore because maybe they invest in a real estate or they have another passive income coming in or whatever they're doing. Capital is not enough and that's not going to work forever. But if you have a good culture, that's what makes people stay. And uh, that also goes into management as well. If you have good management, if you have good sales managers, if someone wakes up, it's the same thing as any other job. If someone wakes up and hates their manager, they're not going to want to work with them. They're not going to want to be, in, they're going to be inspired to work with them. Okay. And I also would put great leadership because a lot of people say, you know, just have a sales manager. That's really good. Okay. I actually don't like this. I think, I think the sales manager should be more of a technical person, a more practical individual, but I think there's another role that's missing in, in, in uh, leading a sales team and keyword lead. I think you need a sales manager. Okay. And I think you also need a sales leader and these are not the same person. I think if you're a startup and you're a smaller organization, then yes, I think you could try to, you know, wear both hats and make one person do both. But I think when you're large, you need a sales leader and you also need a sales manager. And the best way to actually get a good sales leader is someone that's been a sales rep. They've created a lot of money. You know, they've done millions and millions of dollars in sales. There's someone that's that the, the sales reps, the setters and closers can actually look up to because they've actually already walked the talk and they've done it, okay? Sales manager, ideally, they've also walked the talk and honestly, the best sales managers and the best sales leaders typically are when you already have setters and closers that are killing it on your team that wanna like kinda advance the role and they wanna manage people, then you can move them up from a setter or a closer, preferably closer, into a sales manager or into a sales leader. And because what I've noticed when I'm trying to train my new reps and ramp them up into KPI, the best thing I can do is kind of point them to, yes, the sales manager and the sales leader, but also point them to the top closers, point them to the top setters, whatever role they are, because they'll, re they'll look up to them and they'll also have this friendly competition with inside of them and that'll just motivate them. It'll show them that it's possible. And then they're going to also talk to somebody and realize that it's just another human being and that they got, you know, 30 K a month in commissions. So it's very possible for them to do it as well. So I also motivate my team by 
making my top reps very accessible to people who are newer into the sales team, okay? And that's kind of how you want it to be. Okay, so if you have uh, a lot of money that you can make your sales reps, you have a good culture, you have a good sales manager, you have a good sales leader, and then you also have a, a good offer, right? You're actually giving your, whoever you're selling to a lot of results. You're not selling, you know, snake oil or anything crappy. You're actually helping people and you have a lot of testimonials. And actually one thing that I do is I'll have my sales reps actually watch testimonials frequently. Like I'll, I'll shove, shove it down their face, but like, yo, watch this, check this one out. You actually sold this person. Look, now this person's, you know, doing 3k a month on the side or 10k a month, whatever it is. Look, you sold this person, you brought this person in, and now look what they're doing because you brought them in. And then that will install belief into the sales rep's minds as well because there's three things that a sales rep needs to actually become successful and, and perform in your organization. I'm gonna break this down. You got one, they need to believe, believe in the product. If they don't believe in the product, they're gonna feel very unethical about selling it, and that's gonna be a very temporary thing. Okay, phone cut out, but number two, they need to believe in themselves. Okay, they can believe in the product, but if they don't believe in themselves to actually distribute the product and sell someone on it, then they're not gonna get a sale. Okay, because sales is a confidence game in my opinion. If you're confident in the product, you're confident in your own abilities, that's gonna come across on your sales calls and you're gonna get a lot more sales because of that, okay? And number three, they need to believe in the long term vision, okay? This is huge, this one's huge. They need to believe in the long term vision. If they believe in the first two, that's great, but they need the third one as well. If they don't believe in the long term vision of what you guys are building or what they're selling or what they're doing or how much impact you guys are giving to the world, they're not gonna care to sell it. It's just a temporary thing for them. It might be a cash grab, but you don't want those types of people on your team. You want people that believe in the vision and would work with you even if they weren't making money. If you get people like that, that's the best type of people you can get, okay? But these are the three things that a sales rep needs in order to kill it on your sales team. And I'm gonna to recap this. They need to believe in the product or whatever offer you guys are selling. They need to believe in themselves. And another way to do this is to go show them other sales reps and, and show like, hey, this is just another human being. They just followed this script. They just sold this product to this audience. Now they're making 30K a month, whatever it is. They need to believe in themselves and you need to create belief within your sales reps, all right? And they also need to believe in the long-term uh, vision of your company. Okay, so you're gonna be around for a while, hopefully. All right. Well, you're not if you're gonna if you don't get the sales stuff figured out. Otherwise, you're screwed <laughs> because that's what drives your entire business. But um, so yeah. Now, other so these are how you can create role incentive to get people to stay. And at the end of the day, if you want to get a good, you know, a setter, or you want to get a good closer, this is the most ideal role you could possibly give them. Okay. A closer, ideally, this is what they want. They want inbound, okay? They want qualified, okay? They want warm, warm people ready to buy, sadly. <laughs> and they just want those on their calendar and they wanna do five to eight calls a day. Now keep in mind, this is what your closers want. Now is this realistic? No, okay? But this is what they want, this is what a lot of sales universities and stuff has sold them that an ideal situation looks like. But this is what they're looking for. As close as you can get to this, the, the higher quality of talent you're gonna get. So if you could actually hit, you know, three or four of these things, then you're gonna be able to get an A player, a top a top 1% closer. If you, have, if you have this as an offer, and they can make their ideal OT. Okay, so if they can do this and they can make, I'm gonna throw another, another uh, ideal scene for the closer, is if they can make 20 to 30K a month. Okay, if you can get somewhere close to make, helping them make 30, 20 to 30K a month, they take five to eight phone calls a day, they're warm, they're qualified and they're inbound, and you're hitting these things over here, you're getting, you have a good offer, you have good management, you have good culture, you have good OTE, you're gonna be able to get some really good closers. Now, if you don't have these, then it's gonna be harder for you to actually incentivize top talent to work with you. And the way that, the reason that is, is because 
if you don't have these things, right, why would they want to work with you if they're a really good closer versus working with another company that does have this OT, that does have these inbound qualified warm leads and does give them five date appointments with these criteria right here and does have a good culture, go, does have good management, does have a good sales leader. Why would they want to work with you if you're a newer company, you don't have any of this shit figured out versus the company that has all this dialed in? They're going to want to work with that company. So a lot of people come to me they're like, hey, I want the number one closer. Okay, bro, but like we gotta we gotta set this stuff up. Otherwise, like I can't force someone that's experienced to want to work on a crappy offer, right? With low OTE, with horrible leads, with uh, horrible management, with horrible sales leadership. I can't get a good closer to work on that. So eh, that's not how it works. Okay, so setting this stuff up is super important, right? And uh, yeah, and for setter, the way an ideal scene for a setter is very similar. They want quality leads. Typically, if you have a personal brand and they can like call somebody and be like, hey, you know how long you've been following Jake for? Yeah, yeah, man, no, yeah, Jake's a beast, man. You know, edify the person who runs the coaching program or whatever you're selling. If you can, if you can have that, that's ideal for a setter because those are just a lot easier to sell to because they already trust the person that they'd be buying from and uh, that's that obviously helps, okay? So if you can have a personal brand, personal brand, leads or anything like referrals or people that showed high intent. So like maybe Google SEO, like obviously if someone searches on Google and they click on your website, they're very high intent. They're looking for what you have. They're looking for it right now. That's the 3% of the market that's trying to buy right now. If you get those types of leads in the center, they'll be happy. Okay. And then obviously the same thing, right? If they're qualified, you know, they're inbound, but also I hate when setters look for qualified uh, leads because that's the setter's job. The setter's job is to qualify the leads, not get qualified leads. The closer, they get the qualified leads because the setter is gonna qualify them properly and then set them up an appointment with the closer. Okay, so that's super important. So personal brand leads, um, typically, you know, they'll want warm. They don't want a cold call. No one wants to cold call. Hell no. <laughs> so if you can get some warmer leads with, like I said, personal brand or high intent leads, that's super important. Okay. Typically, you know, a good KPI set for them is, you know, 100, 300 calls a day. Uh, or if they're, if they're getting booked and you're doing setter bookings, then same thing as the closer, five days, something like that. And then, I mean, if you can make a, a setter, you know, seven to 15 K a month, that's a good OT. If you can make a setter seven to 15 K a month, which we've placed setters with roles like that, that is ideal. Okay. Um, and we work with some clients that do have OTs for closers of, you know, 25 K a month. That's what their top closers would make or 30 some K. So these, these roles exist guys, just so you guys know, if you don't have a, a good enough role to incentivize top talent yet, that's fine. Another thing you can do, which is, which is really important. I've never heard anyone talk about this is if you want to get, um, if you have a crappier, you know, uh, systems and stuff, but you have, maybe a good culture or good management or something like that, and you want to get top talent before their top talent statistically, then what you can do is go find sales reps that are naturals at selling, but they're new. Okay. So they're new, they're new to selling. Okay. So if you can get people that are new to selling, but they're naturals, and the only way you're going to know this is like hiring an agency like repconnect.io or something like that, because we've seen and trained thousands of sales reps. So we know who's natural and you just need to find them early on. Cause if you can get someone that's new to selling and hasn't done millions of dollars in sales yet, and they're actually a natural and they're good, then you can, ins you can put them on your role. And for, for two reasons, one, they're ignorant and they don't know that there are better roles, but two, they love your team. Like, and they love your vision. Like that's the most important thing. Um, and it's not even an ignorance thing. Like they can know that this stuff exists, but it's hard to find and they're not ready for this anyways. These roles that have 20 to 30 K a month OTE, they're not going to hire someone that's new just because they're a natural. They're looking for a track record. So for a lot of sales reps that are new and natural, you can pick those people up on your crappier systems and then build them up. And then they'll want to stay on your team because you have a good culture, you have a good vision. They believe in the product. You're actually creating an impact, but they can't even get these roles with the 20 to 30 K a month OTE yet. So pick up the naturals before they're ready for that because they have to do hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars in deals before they're ready for those types of roles. So it's super important to note that you can find naturals 
and have crappier systems and get them while they're early in their sales career and they'll actually crush it for you, okay? So that's another really uh, good way you can get top talent before they're statistically top talent. Okay, so hopefully this video helped you guys. If you guys want any help with your sales rep recruiting, we'll help you. We have a recruiting software, we have a recruitment agency. All you gotta do is go to repconnect.io. You can like, comment, subscribe, comment down below what you guys thought. And uh, yeah, hopefully this video helped you guys and uh, let's get recruiting.